Namaste, everyone. Namaste. 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 Hello. So, in our previous class, we learned about great architecture of Kakatiyas. Do you remember the structures we discussed about? Kakatiya Thoranam. Yes. Um, Thousand Pillar Temple. Oh, yes. The Ramapa Temple with the sandbox technique for the foundation and it was built with floating bricks. Oh, yes. Anything else? Do Warangal you Fort. Yes, Warangal Fort. Fort. So all these structures we have seen in our previous video. Today, we will learn a little more about them and about different rulers, both men and women who ruled this region. The Tuckan had seen great empires of Cholas and Chalukyas. Uh, but by 11th and 12th century, they were on a decline and four major kingdoms have emerged. Uh, Shauna Yadavas ruled over the Marathi-speaking regions which form modern-day Maharashtra with its capital at Devagiri or Daulatabad. And then uh, another kingdom that is Hoyasalas over Karnataka with their capital at Halibit and also Pandyas over Tamil Nadu and some parts of Kerala with their capital at Madurai. And the fourth uh, um, kingdom was Kakatiyas Kakat at uh, Orugallu. So it is currently uh, Kakatiyas, uh, uh, the current uh, uh, state in India is Telangana. So Kakatiyas were feudatories of eastern Chalukyas from around 8th century. So the first ruler of Kakatiyas, Rudradeva I, declared independence from Chalukyas uh, in 1163 current era. That was nearly 856 years ago from now. So he built a wondrous thousand-pillared temple in Hanumkunda to commemorate his independence. A later king, Ganapati Deva, who ruled for 60 years from 1199 to 1262 current era and is considered the greatest Kakatiya king, built up the capital Warangal and greatly extended Kakatiya boundaries. He actively promoted foreign trade. So we will come back to the foreign trade later on to find out what kind of trade they did. Um, let's think, uh, talk about Ganapati Deva a little bit. Ganapati Deva had no sons and he brought up his daughter Rudrama Devi to be a ruler, training her in all the requisite skills. Rudrama Devi crowned in 1269 AD after the death of her father. She was married to Chalukya prince uh, Veerabhadra before uh, her father's death and she had three uh, girls, three daughters that is uh, Mumadamma, Ruyamma, Rudramma who were married to local noblemen. Rudrama designated uh, Mumadamma's son Prataparudra as her heir. Can you tell us more about Rudrama Queen? I am very interested. Oh yes, certainly. Uh, she was a great queen and she came to power in troubled times and they became still more troubled because all her neighbours saw her accession as a good opportunity to annex her kingdom. At Rudrama's accession, uh, the Yadavas attacked from Devagiri. So she successfully pushed them back and won the battle against Yadava king. Uh, and she assumed the title Raya Gajakesari and, um, and celebrated her victory with Shauna Yadavas. What does that mean? Oh, uh, what does uh, Raya Gajakesari do you mean? Yes, Raya Gajakesari means the lion over the elephant kings. So she assumed the title and she called herself the lion over all the elephant kings. 
She built a Ranga Mandapa in the Swayambhu Temple in Varangal to commemorate her Shauna victory in which she is shown as a warrior mounted on a lion with a sword and a shield in her hands. An elephant trunk holds up a lotus uh, to her in submission. So it all ties in very well with her title as well which is Raya Gajakesari. The sculpture is a beautiful sculpture. Apart from Yadavas, Gangas from Odisha and Pandyas from the south also attacked Kakatiyas during Rudrama's time. Also, many nobles revolted and she survived the onslaught wow. and she successfully, yes, she successfully pushed back these kings to their original boundaries. Uh, Rudrama Devi, in spite of all this insistent warfare, she worked on many projects. Right? Yes. We will learn about all of that in our next video. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you. You're welcome, everyone. See you next time. See Bye. You.